Okay guys, today I'm going to give you guys a quick tutorial on my uh, capturing and editing settings for Sony Vegas. Um, to start things off, I capture with a Dazzle DVC-100. Uh, pretty good. I got an S-Video running out of it and uh, just normal RCA. So the first thing I want to talk about is a lot of people complain about their the sound lagging whenever they're capturing with their DVC-100. I noticed this happened a lot to me also when I used to capture on MPEG-4. Now I just capture on regular just MPEG. Now they say MPEG-4 is a lot higher quality, but I still get decent enough quality through just MPEG. And I'll show you guys that later in my Pinnacle software. Right now, if you guys are capturing using a, a standard laptop, a lot of laptops these days have power options that say either high performance, default, or power saver. You're going to want to put your computer on high performance. And I also noticed that caused my audio not to lag when I did that. So first things first is my Pinnacle software. I don't have my capture card plugged in right now, so you guys aren't going to get a picture right here. But as for my presets for my video, I'm capturing an MPEG quality, frame size 720 by 480. My quality is at 95%, and audio you can pretty much just leave alone. For the, well, this is the levels. I keep everything normal, everything's default. I capture on 16 by 9 widescreen. If you want to capture in regular, which I don't see many people doing, turn on 4 by 3. Uh, I'm in America, so I use NTSC. PAL if you're European. Um, I like to keep my sharpness a little lower than the default. Um, I use Pinnacle Studio Ultimate 14. If you're using Pinnacle Studio 12, it's pretty much the same thing, just different loadout. Um, I noticed though, when I did change to 14, that also stopped my lag, my audio lag. So maybe that's the problem, if you guys want to try that. Um, that's pretty much it for my Pinnacle software. Now we're going to go on to some Sony Vegas. Okay, so I got some sample footage right here. And the first thing I want to talk about is when you first drag your sample footage or whatever f footage you have to your comp area. This is your comp area, by the way. You might not get the desired frame size that you're looking for or what you at least thought you were capturing in. Now, if Sony Vegas isn't recognizing your footage right away as to what its actual aspect ratio is, you want to right-click your footage, go to Properties, click on Media, and switch your pixel aspect ratio to one that is the one you're capturing on or whatever looks the most closest to what you're looking for so in this case I still have little black boxes over here and that's because I'm not capturing in total 1280 by 720 aspect ratio but this is pretty much where all my videos are in now there's another option you guys should uncheck which is the resampling whenever you upload footage to Sony Vegas it automatically sets it to smart resample and what that does is in between frames it creates an intermediate frame which kind of blends both of those frames together so you get kind of a ghosting effect now that's good if you're doing like a slow motion scene or something like that but if you're just doing strictly gameplay like let's say you're doing just a commentary you're gonna to want to turn that off and you just want to get normal frame rate with no ghosting at all now there's some basic video effects that you guys should know about other than, you know, doing special effects, and that should be your color correction. Now, my favorite is Studio RGB to Computer RGB, and what's that going to do is it's going to take away a lot of the haze in your video. Now, this is good for other capture cards as well, whether it be HD or Dazzle or any capture card. You're going to want to use a color correction of some sort and use Studio RGB to Computer RGB. And what this does is it gets rid of the haze look, that kind of like small blur. Well, not really a blur to it, but it just makes the color real nice. Now, if you're using a Dazzle capture card like me, the picture quality is not going to be that great. And as you guys saw before, my saturation is a little lower than what it should be. So I, I add a little uh, sharpen to it. And uh, as you can see, I have my preset here. It's on 0 .650. 
Now, in the video preview, it looks kind of messed up, but actually it comes out pretty alright. So, I use .650. You might have to make it a little different, because I, I use a VGA cable, and it's being split into S-Video. But if you're using just regular um, composite cables, it might be a little less, maybe like a .500. The next thing you're going to want to add is a saturation adjust to get those colors really, really prominent, really, not, really good looking. If I can get a good scene right here, this is probably be going. When I add these saturation levels, you can see the color just drastically change. It gives it a lot more color detail. And uh, I'll keep the camera here just for a little bit so you guys can copy down these settings. And that's pretty much it. I would say the most important of the three would be your color correction. Now, you don't want to mistake your color correction. I'll go back to it really quick. They have computer RGB to studio RGB and studio RGB to computer RGB. You want this one, the studio to computer. And that's pretty much it. That's what I use to record in and what I use to render. Um, oh yeah, let's go over my rendering settings actually. So your video rendering quality of course is going to be on your best. Audio, you don't really need to change that. Your video, sometimes... If you haven't made it yourself already, this is set to 90. You're going to want to put that all the way to 100. So make sure that's always all the way to 100. Um, I do high definition 1280 by 720, which is the best for YouTube videos. Because YouTube recognizes it as HD and they'll give you the 720p option. I keep my pixel aspect ratio of my composition 1.0 square. But that has no effect on what you change in your actual composition as we did before. And I use Windows Media Video V9, which is WMV. And that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed my tutorial. And uh, please leave some comments and subscribe if you want to learn some more later on. So I'll see you guys later.